Hello. Hello. Glad you're here this evening. I kept on saying, don't say this morning. Good morning. Um, so I'm, of all the places you could be, I'm glad that you are here tonight. And I hope you don't have to go to Walmart after this because no one wants to do that. Um, I have one announcement. Um, Lance on the next slide. That's not it. Yeah, that one. So tomorrow we're having church. It's Sunday. So we're going to have church. Um, but we're going to have song and scripture and hot chocolate and um, donuts and cookies and things for you to come while that's taking place. So I invite you to come and we'll sing the Christmas story again um, and we'll rejoice. Um, this evening, the one other thing is there's candles over here for our closing song. Um, and when you come forward for communion, you'll get those on either side. Now let us uh, go to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, you come to us in crazy and strange ways. And this night we remember one of the strangest. When you came to us in skin, in flesh and bone, in a vulnerable child. To help us know what that means to help us know what you mean to, when you say you love us. Help us to figure that out and know what that means. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and we sing our gathering hymn. me in our call to worship. Christ the Savior is born. Come all who are faithful and all who seek to seek joy in their, your lives. It's the season to sing praises to God for Christ's child is near. Can one night make such a difference? Can one star outshine all others? Can one baby, can one baby change the world? Thousand times, yes. On a night like th this night, one birth changed the world. Hope springs afresh. Forgiveness sets loose new possibilities. Love flows from heart to heart. Augustus and Quinarius, ancient names that seem odd to today's ears. Nazareth and Bethlehem, distant towns we know little about. We gather together to hear once more the story, a story so ancient and yet so current, so distant and yet so near. Let us join together our opening hymn.
may be seated. And let us join together in our opening prayer. Living God, on this holy night, we gather to stand with shepherds amazed at your glory, to sing with angels rejoicing in your work, to wait with Joseph trusting in your promise, to sit with Mary cradling your love. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips that we too may sing with uplifted hearts. May the good news of this night inspire us to tell the world of our great joy. Amen. No. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards all through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us join together in a way in the manger. Our Hebrew lesson is from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, starting at verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulder, and the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midden. For all the boots of the trampled warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born, un for, born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. my best go. Mary, did you know
did you know that your baby boy gave sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know? Our gospel lesson comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the, her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In the region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy. For all the people to you is born this day in the city of, city of David your Savior, who is the Messiah. The Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now. To Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with the haste and found Mary and Joseph and child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God 
for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On this night of nights, Emmanuel, born full of grace and truth in the company of heaven and hosts, we're offered an opportunity to join the celebration. We are invited.
On Christmas Eve, we are offered the gift of salvation. Let us come to the light of Christ. Let us sing the song. Let us gain the salvation from day to day. Let us offer our reverence to Jesus Emmanuel. Let us move the lives of faithful and righteous. May Christ be born in us anew this night and forevermore. We have waited in the night, in the light of hope, for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The grace of God is here, bringing salvation to all. Let us sing to the Lord a new song and tell of his salvation from day to day. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. We light the the candle of Christ, the light of the world. There's an Episcopal priest who recounts the story of Fred, a father of a six-year-old, a boy named Sam, and about their holiday plans on a YouTube video called A Monk in the Midst. The father explained that they would get up and open their presents on Christmas morning and then go to church. The son replied, church on Christmas? We're going to church on Christmas? Fred patiently explained, of course, that's what Christmas is all about. It's about Jesus and the birth of God coming. Yeah, yeah, I know, the boy interrupts. I know what it is, but church on Christmas? Church ruins everything. Well, (coughs) church wrecks everything, sorry. Church wrecks everything. Well, yes, church does disrupt things, disrupts our normal patterns of life. Yes, well, it does. And tonight we come here to encounter not only a church that wrecks and disrupts things, but also a child who was born that wrecks and disrupts everything as well. It might seem a little strange to consider how we celebrate Christmas in our society and might even be unsettling in a time when war and violence and rumor and scandal dominate the headlines. But we must not be distracted by the attempts of culture to romanticize Christmas and overlook the scandal of both the cradle and the cross. We all do it, to be honest. Even it happens in the church. Think for a moment about how our own hymns seek to tame this feast day, this Christmas, into something more palatable, and dare we even say nice. Consider the opening of the beloved carol, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Lovely words from Philip Brooks, but if we consider the turbulent history in the Middle East, seeing Bethlehem as a serene place is more accurately conveys a wish than any kind of historical fact. And what about away in the manger? The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. No crying. A 
nurse or a doctor would label that at zero on the APGAR score and begin CPR immediately. Seriously, almost everything our popular culture seems to be colluding together to glamorize Christmas and to hide the scandal of Christmas. And I haven't even mentioned the emotional expectations of the holidays. You know those family get-togethers that often don't meet our expectations or the longing for estranged relationships to magically get better by some kind of Christmas miracle. Of course, there's cultural pressure over to overconsume, whether overboard on buying presents and dreading the credit card bill, or drinking or eating, dreading what the scale will tell you in January. Between the excessive tenderness, emotional burdens, the unrealistic cultural expectations, well, perhaps we do actually need a child of God to wreck and disrupt what we've turned Christmas into. The reality is we come together this night to pay honor to the one who came to wreck all that we created, the one that came to disrupt everything. This child was the plan of a subversive God who snuck in the back door of history on a mission to wreck our way of life. Coming as one of us, a vulnerable, poor, and powerless, he came to upend the world we created. He came to wreck and disrupt our selfishness and narcissism so that we might be able to love God and love others and to receive that love in return. He came to disrupt our fear of death so that we might be able to live more fully and freely in this life. He came to wreck our political systems, which choose who's in and who's out, so that all God's children would be included in the kingdom of God. He came to break down our tendency towards tribalism, pitting one group against another, us versus them. Oh yeah, we still organize ourselves into tribes. We just call them political parties or ethnic groups or nations or faith traditions now. He came to break down our economy of values to build different ones based on valuing the eternal rather than things that pass away. He came to break down our ideas of family and embrace the wider vision of God's family, which includes all people, not just ones like us. So yes, Emmanuel came to wreck everything, every structure to try to build which puts us first at the expense of everyone else. As Jesus would later tell his followers, he came not to be served, but to serve. And he calls us to follow that path. This is no such small thing. For 2,000 plus years, people have come together to mark the birth of Christ as God's subversive way of dwelling among us and wrecking everything for the sake of bringing about something greater than we could ever ask or imagine. To mark a vision of the kingdom of God unfolding right here in the midst, regardless of our fears or of the conflict we may be experiencing. Tonight we celebrate the birth of the one who brings new life for his people. And the angels said to the shepherds, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. It seems so strange, doesn't it? The sign of salvation, the sign of new life is a baby in a feeding trough. Luke repeats this fact three times. Jesus was in a manger. It's as if there's some meaning behind this more important about Jesus spending his first night in a feeding trough. A first look at the manger reminds us of God's favor for the meek and the humble, yes, but I suspect there's more to it. What happens at the manger? It's a feeding trough. Within the humble walls of the shelter of the manger is where the hungry are fed. If you think about it, the significance of this night, this birth begins to take a little new meaning. Moses told the Israelites that as they prepared to enter the promised land, you do not live on bread alone. The prophet asked, asked the people, why spend money on bread that does, won't satisfy? And early in his ministry, just after feeding the 5,000, Jesus said to the people, I am the bread of life. Friends, we all have within us a deep hunger. We try to every way we know to satisfy those longings, especially at Christmas time but we won't find what we're looking for in a mall. And I'm sorry, it's not neatly wrapped underneath the tree or even in Santa's sack. We won't find what we're looking for and longing for in the holiday visit to family. No, 
we have to go to the feeding trough in Bethlehem. The only place we can find our hunger truly satisfied is there at the manger. Here in the presence of our Savior Christ the Lord, we find the meaning and purpose. Here we find value. Here we know that we're not alone and that we're loved. But we know that God is with us. Here we're loved and forgiven. Here we find eternal life. On that Christmas night so long ago, a messenger came with good news. And the angel didn't have to go very far to find people who were hoping and praying and longing for some good news. In the olive groves just outside of Bethlehem, there was a humble, humble shepherds who were hungry for meaning and purpose, for love and forgiveness. And so the messenger brought good news of great joy to those, these lowly shepherds keeping watch over their flock. It was an invitation. What are you hungry for? What you are hungry for is what this baby brings. And the way you will know what I say is true is you will find Christ lying in a manger in the feeding trough. So the shepherds came to the trough, and then they went back rejoicing for all that they had saw and heard. Tonight, the same invitation is extended to you and to all to come to the manger, to come to the feeding trough, come to the Lord's table, you who are hungry, for what you long for is here. Take and eat this bread of life. Find your fulfillment in God's presence as Christmas. And then go like the shepherds from this place rejoicing, telling all you have seen and heard in Christ's presence. Be a messenger in the world this Christmas and every day to this world that is hungering and hoping to be, be the one who brings good news of great joy. May this holy child, this holy one, man wrecking crew, disrupt your life this season so that God might plant unconditional love in your heart and grace in your heart that may you sprout and share with others. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward. So this evening we are taking a special offering for uh, the nonprofit organization called Circle of Care and for their foster care ministry. And I have a video to share with you. But first, let me just pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for your presence among us this night. We thank you for your child coming into the world, for you entering the world. We thank you for organizations like Circle of Care who enact your love for people who need it, for a child who's in a difficult situation, that they may feel love in a way that may not otherwise. Help us to be your hands and feet in the world. Help us be your body. Help us be your church. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Yep, that's okay. Receive this invitation. We're here because Jesus has called us strangers and friends, locals and guests, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It's a way that always makes company with Jesus. As Jesus gathers and invites to his table where we find where we're fed, he mates us through him. We who are different are joined together. So come not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come not because of how you feel, but because God has nourishment for you here at the trough. Come not because you deserve a place, but because Jesus invites you just as you are and is waiting for you in, with open arms. Come to the table this Christmas and let Christ be born anew in you. And now let us join together in a prayer of confession. God of the commonplace, we confess that we have been impressed by the power and authority. We do not expect to meet you in the court of the land, in cold barns, or the lonely duty watches. Hear the good news. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Now let us join together in our great thanksgiving. Let us open our hearts to the Spirit of Christ, born a long time ago, and born again this night in our lives. We open our hearts to God, Christ being born anew in our lives. We are all your children, O God. God be with you. And also with you. Prepare the way of the Lord. Straighten our crooked paths, O God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth the life from earth. <coughs> You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through your prophets. For in the fullness of time you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And as so with the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there in ending him. Hold on. Keep going. There you go. Now. Holy, 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 holy. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem, and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of the stable, Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, and delivered us from slavery, delivered us from <coughs> sin, and delivered us from death. As your word became flesh and born among women on that night so long ago, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the meal was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. For you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, holy God, grant that in praise and thanksgiving we may be a holy 
and living sacrifice, acceptable in your sight, that our lives may proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts, gifts of bread and wine, that through Christ's presence we may become a beacon of holy light, a source of joy, a source of a witness for peace. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one with seekers far and near, and one in ministry to all the world until we feast at that heavenly banquet together and all shall be made well. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we are bold to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, many who are, are one body. But we come to the table as hurting and broken people. It's through participation in the body of Christ that we find wholeness. Thanks be to God. The cup in which we share is the sharing of the new life in Christ. And we drink in the blessings of God. Thanks be to God. <coughs> I'd like you to come and receive a candle as you come. And if you want gluten-free, there's a gluten-free option in the basket up here. I'd like you to come.
and now let us join together in the prayer after receiving. We are filled with joy, for we have heard good news of great joy. We are filled with love, we have tasted the sign of God's great love. We are filled with hope, and angels still seen in our world. There is life for us. <coughs>
once we stumbled. Now walk with confidence. Rise up and go, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. May the, May the light, light of Christ, Christ lead us forever. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now go forth in the peace of Christ, loving God and serving your neighbor in all that you do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. You are welcome. Welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it.